So I wanna take some time and talk about these tax credits because there's a lot of confusion, understandably so, but unfortunately there's also a lot of misinformation out there. Now, there are some provisions in this that are new and it's taking some time to digest. I spent a lot of time last night and all day today sifting through this bill and getting a true understanding of what we're looking at. We've also had an opportunity at this point to hear from some legal professionals on their opinions on some of these subsections. I do want to state that keep in mind just because there is a prominent Twitter account does not mean it is correct information. Uh, I know that it is sometimes hard to understand what is and is not correct and none of this that is being shared out there is with bad intention. So with that said, there is some misinformation going out there and it's confusing the heck out of people. So today I'm gonna provide some clarity for you specifically on the retroactivity of this bill. This is not a retroactive bill. This bill is new tax credits that are for cars that are procured after December 31st of 2022. It does not matter when you ordered your car. All that matters is when you take delivery. You have not purchased that car until you have written a check to somebody and they have handed you the keys to that car. That's when you've purchased that car and that's the only date that matters. You can order the car now and it doesn't matter as long as you don't take delivery until 2023 if you want these new tax credits. Now, with that said, there is one provision in here that is the cause of a lot of this confusion. And I'm gonna clear this up for you right here, right now. And real quick, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Drive Protected Shop. Drive Protected Shop offers pre-cut DIY kits to do PPF yourself. I have wrapped both of my cars in PPF all the way around and I've saved more than half based on the best quotes I've received to have it professionally installed. Is my install perfect? No, but I literally saved thousands of dollars and you can too by doing it yourself. This is absolutely possible. You should at least consider doing the front end of your car to protect the front end because it's such a big painted surface that's exposed to all the rocks and debris that kick up on the highway. Use code BTG to save 20% on your order and visit driveprotected.shop today. So thanks again to Drive Protected Shop for sponsoring this video. The section of the bill that people are talking about right now is on page 386. And in the description of this video, you will find a link to this bill. So you can read this for yourself if you like, or you can follow along. So down towards the bottom on line 20, Section one, transition rule. Solely for the purposes of application of section 30D of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 in the case of taxpayer that, after December 31st, 2021, and before the date of enactment of this act, purchased or entered into a written binding contract to purchase a new qualified plug-in electric drive motor vehicle as defined in section 30D D1 of Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as in effect on the day before the date of enactment of this act and number two, place such vehicle in service on or after the date of enactment of this act. Such taxpayer may elect at such time and in such form a manner as the secretary of the treasury or the secretary's delegate may prescribe to treat such vehicle as having been placed in service on the day before the date of enactment of this act what that all means is basically let's say for a moment you are looking to purchase a hyundai you may place your order now and even though you can't get that car right now even if you take delivery of that car in 2023, you can still get the existing tax code for the seven, up to $7,500 tax credit for that Hyundai. The reason why this is important is because come January 1st of 2023, that Hyundai will not qualify for the same amount of tax credits. Now, here's the thing. The existing bill is not refundable. The new bill that's being proposed is refundable. So there's a big difference there. Essentially, what that means is if you do not have enough tax liability, you will not qualify for 7,500. You must have at least 7,500 in tax liability to get 7,500 in tax credits. With the new bill, 
it doesn't matter how much tax liability you have. You can qualify for as many credits are as available for the specific car you're buying, assuming your income does not exceed the maximum cap on this bill. That does not mean if you bought a Tesla in 2022, you can get a retroactive credit for this car. That is not what this means. This does not at all say that they are going to remove the 200,000 vehicle cap in 2022. The 200,000 vehicle cap is removed starting January 1st of 2023, and all credits will then fall under this new amendment. But if you purchased a car that is going to qualify for less credits with the new bill, but you ordered it in 2022, you may still qualify for these existing credits that are in place, which is the up to 7,500 based on your tax liability. So this is protecting people that are still planning to purchase an EV this year that qualify already for tax credits and don't have to worry about this bill going into effect and meaning they no longer qualify for tax credits. That's what this means. This is not retroactive. This is not retroactive. I don't know how much clearer I can make this. This is not retroactive. The only people who are affected by this particular section are those people who order or purchase a car right now in 2022, not in 2021, not in 2023, but they order their car in 2022 and don't take delivery until 2023. Also the people who take delivery in 2023, as long as those cars are from a manufacturer that has not exceeded the 200,000 vehicle cap, you will still have access to that up to $7,500 tax credit that is available today. You will get that tax credit at time of filing your taxes. This is the existing tax code. This is the existing law up to 7,500 based on your tax liability. This does not help anybody that's buying a GM or a Tesla in 2022 period. This is not going to be a retroactive credit for people who took delivery of a Tesla this year. If you want tax credits for a Tesla, you cannot take delivery until January 1st of 2023. Now, keep in mind, a lot of you have an order in right now and you are waiting for delivery. And some of you are probably getting close and some of you may even still see towards the end of the year, a couple things are gonna start happening. People are gonna start canceling their orders. People are gonna start trying to delay their orders. Tesla is not going to allow the masses to push off taking delivery. What they're going to do is they're going to start canceling people's orders if they don't take delivery. So you need to pay close attention to what price you have locked in on your Tesla. With this bill, as long as you're getting a long range Model 3 and the price you have locked in is less than $55,000, you will qualify for the full $7,500. If you have a standard range Model 3, you might be in trouble because this bill talks about the battery components and the minerals that go into the battery chemistry. I do not believe the Model 3 standard range does qualify under this new language in this bill. If you have a Model Y, as long as it's not over $80,000 in price, you're good to go. So a long range and a performance, assuming you don't have full self-driving, you should be able to qualify for this tax credit starting January 1st of 2023. So you can't take delivery before then. You have to wait until 2023 to take delivery. Tesla's not gonna let you just delay for the rest of the year. So as they're canceling orders and as people are canceling their orders on their own, What's going to happen is people who have delivery estimated in January of 2023, you're going to get a call much sooner that your car is ready. So be prepared for that. And Tesla is going to play hardball like they have in the past when a phenomenon like this happened and people were trying to push out their orders. Tesla was not allowing people to delay their orders more than a few days, up to 30 days in some cases. So just be prepared for this situation. And I hope that this provides the clarity. This is not retroactive, period. Nothing about this is retroactive. For people who are looking at buying a Hyundai or a Kia, you may wanna make sure you at least order that car in 2022 because come 2023, that Hyundai or that Kia is not gonna qualify for the same amount of tax credits as they do today. So you need to at least place an order this year if you wanna get those tax credits. And I believe the same is going to be the case for the Volkswagen 
ID4 as well, because that battery also is not made in North America. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.